In our understanding car crash videos, we explored how the laws of motion affect linear motion. Now we're going to take a look at circular motion. We're going to use this little device here that has a little cup on it with some water in it. wonder why the engineers designed it to have this handle with the strap right above the water. Let's see. Let's put it in some circular motion. Notice the water doesn't spill out. Even if I swing it back and forth, the water doesn't spill out. So what's going on? Well, I tell you what, let's go bigger to see if we can figure out what's happening here. So, switch out a small tray for a bigger tray. All right, so here I have a bigger tray that I have a glass of water on and I have my strings, again, right above the glass of water. All right, so now I'm gonna swing it back and forth. And what you need to do is predict what would happen if I were to swing it really big and go all the way around. What's gonna to happen to the glass? What's gonna to happen to the water in the glass? Got your prediction? All right, one, two, and three. All right, okay, watch where the water is, and now stop. Whoa, not a drop came out. So what's happening here? Well, for something to go in a circle, whether it's a tray spinning around or a tether ball on a pole, or the moon going around the earth. There needs to be some sort of inward pulling or centripetal force on that object. Otherwise, the object's inertia just keeps it going in a straight line. So my centripetal force was exerted along the strings, which pull on the tray, okay, which push on the glass and keep it from flying out in a straight line, and it goes in a circle, as well as the water that's in the glass. Everything is feeling that centripetal force, and so it goes in a circle. That's circular motion, that's centripetal force. How is this related to crashes and vehicle safety? Let's look at a car driving through a flat curve. Where does the centripetal force come from in order to change the car's direction from linear motion into curve motion? It's the friction between the tires and the road that allow it to make that turn. But what happens if the road is slippery, icy, or if the car is just going too fast for the turn? Well, that's where electronic stability control comes in. ESC actually selectively applies the brakes or modulates the engine power so that there's still enough friction between the tires and the road so that car can safely negotiate that turn. I hope you found this video insightful. Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. A new video will be posted every month. So if you enjoyed watching this one, subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking this link right here. And check out some of our other cool videos. If you like watching this one, give us a thumbs up. For more information on the products used in this video, click this link right here.